Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at a very specific skill called integration by partial fractions. And you are going to know almost immediately when you have to do this skill. This is going to come up whenever we have an integral of a fraction and we cannot make it u prime over u immediately. Remember that if we do have the integral of u prime over u, this answer is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. We already know that. So let's take a look at this. If u were x squared plus 3x minus 10, then du would be 2x plus 3. Unfortunately, there's no way to turn a 4x plus 41 into a 2x plus 3. So what we can try, we're going to take a look and see, is the denominator a quadratic? Can it be factored into distinct linear factors? In this instance, that's just going to mean two linear factors. If that's true, we're going to use partial fractions. So this is a little more clear on when to do what. I've got a fraction. It's not u prime over u, and the bottom is a quadratic. So I'm going to factor the denominator, and I'm going to think about this as the integral of 4x plus 41 over the factors of negative 10 that add to 3 are going to be x minus 2 and x plus 5. So if you can factor the denominator, or if the denominator is already factored for you, this is when you're going to try what's called partial fractions. So here's the deal. We are basically going backwards from the crisscross multiply way of bringing fractions together. We are de decomposing into two separate fractions. So I am going to say that 4x plus 41 over x minus 2 times x plus 5 can be decomposed into something over the factor x minus 2 plus something over the factor x plus 5. And so I will just use a and b for those things. The next step is to clear your fractions. We are going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator, and which in this instance would be x minus 2 times x plus 5. So we're doing this to both sides. All right, so when we multiply the left-hand side by x minus 2 times x plus 5, they cancel with the denominator, and I'm left with 4x plus 41. When I multiply the right-hand side, I have to distribute these through. And so let's multiply the first of all, x minus 2 times x plus 5 times a over x minus 2. The x minus 2s would cancel, and you would get a times x plus 5. Then when we did the same thing with the second term, the x plus 5s would cancel, and you get b times x minus 2. So our fractions are clear. Yay, clear fractions. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to solve for a and b by allowing x to equal some friendly numbers. We want to allow x to be something that's going to cancel a or b. So I'm going to let x equal negative 5. If x is negative 5, then it's going to knock out this term and I'm going to be able to solve it for b. So let's take a look at that. If x is negative 5, you plug negative 5 in for x, you get 4 times negative 5 is negative 20 plus 41 is 21. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0 times the a is gone. That's why I chose negative 5. And then for the second term, negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7 with the b there. And this is easy to solve. We now know that b equals negative 3. So we know that what goes in on top or in the numerator of the x plus 5. That's another smiley face with a weird hair. A little hair lick, cow lick. All right, then we're going to let x equal a different number that's going to be nice and friendly. In this instance, I want to knock out the b. So I'm going to let x equal 2. If x equals 2, then 4 times 2 is 8, plus 41 is 49. 2 plus 5 is 7, times a is 7a. And of course, 2 minus 2 is 0, times the b is 0, and so the b is gone, and I'm happy about it. So my a, so I wrote, I'm thinking a, that's an a. That looks like a bell with hair on it, so let's try this again. a is equal to 49 divided by 7 is 7. So I now know what goes on top of the a. So let me show you why this is so much better. We are going to turn our original integral of 4x plus 41 over 
x plus 5 times x minus 2 in the factored form. This is equal to the integral of, scooch back up here, a over x minus 2, and when we did our math, a was 7, and then plus b over x plus 5, and b works out to be a negative 3, so I'm going to have the negative come out in front of the fraction, so minus 3 over x plus 5 dx. Now this is why we did this. We did not have a u prime over u in our original problem, but now I have two separate fractions that it's very easy to make u prime over u. So my answer to these integrals are 7 natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. Again, the 7 can just come out in front, and it 1 over x minus 2 is u prime over u, so it's the natural log of the bottom. And then minus 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5, and then plus c. And that's, that's the skill for partial fraction decomposition. And I want to run over this again real quick. If you have a fraction, check for u prime over u. If it's not, and you can't make it so, and the bottom is a quadratic, factor it out, use this little method, turn it into two easy integrals, and boom, you got your point. I'll see you guys tomorrow.